Hello and welcome to the Thursday, February 1st, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Wrote a quick diary today about the dot internal domain I briefly mentioned yesterday. The main reason I wrote this up was uh, to go a little bit into the details or advantages, disadvantages of using the dot internal top level domain. Can be convenient for some people to have a top level domain like this, but ultimately you are probably better off registering a normal domain for internal use. By having an officially registered domain, you now are able to get TLS certificates. You also don't have to be afraid that down the road someone else is adopting the same scheme that you're using in your network in their network and you know then if you have some merger happening or some vpn between the networks you have conflicts similar to when you're using 90 rfc 1918 ip addresses so ultimately i do recommend you go with the publicly registered domain now it's not a top level domain you're only going to get a normal domain but that's uh, really sufficient, I think, and I'm not really aware of any use case that would absolutely require you to have a top-level domain. If someone is aware of a use case, uh, please uh, let me know. And Ivanti not uh, going anywhere as far as vulnerabilities goes. First of all, the good news, we do now have patches for two of the vulnerabilities that were disclosed earlier in January, CVE 2023-46805 and 2024-21887. These vulnerabilities have been exploited at least since January 11th. And at this point, Ivanti has had a configuration that mitigated some of these vulnerabilities, but now you start having patches available. But the bad part of the news is that we do have two new vulnerabilities. The first one is a SAML issue that is already being exploited. The second one is an elevation of privileges vulnerability with a normal user login. You may become an administrator. Now, as far as the SAML vulnerability goes, it's already being exploited, according to Ivanti. This is actually a server-side request forgery, so you can trick the gateway into accessing resources without any authentication. And Ivanti has already been rolling out patches for these vulnerabilities. So patch, because again, you know, at least the SAML vulnerability is already uh, being exploited. And as far as open source goes, we do have an interesting privilege escalation of vulnerability in glibc. glibc, if you're not familiar with it, it's one of the fundamental C libraries. It's being used to pretty much compile anything. And one of the functions it's implementing is syslog as well as vsyslog. Now, there is a heap-based buffer overflow in the open log ident argument. Luckily, this cannot be set remotely. So otherwise, an attacker could just send some string that the attacker knows is being logged by something via syslog. That's not the case. It's local only, which limits the impact here to a privilege escalation vulnerability. The vulnerability was originally discovered by Qualys and our watch out for any patches that you may see. Debian 12, 13, Ubuntu 2304, 2310, Fedora 37, 39, not just some of the vulnerable uh, Linux distributions. The list is likely much, much larger given the wide use of uh, glibc. And OWASP released an update for mod security. And this update fixes a sort of interesting web application firewall bypass vulnerability. In order to properly parse URLs, uh, mod security uses the question mark as it should to separate the URL from any 
parameters being passed with the URL. However, before it does so, it does URL decode the entire URL. Now, a URL encoded question mark would not be considered a proper delimiter here for parameters. So what an attacker may do is and they may include a URL encoded question mark ahead of the actual question mark and with that confuse mod security as to where the URL ends and where the parameters start. Interesting vulnerability and this type of decoding first, then uh, doing uh, processing later and such. It's always tricky to get this uh, right in uh, situations like this. So real nice case study here of what could possibly go wrong with a URL parsing. Well, and that's it for today. Just a quick reminder, I'll be teaching in Orlando. If you are interested in going somewhere where it's a little bit warmer, likely in March. So hopefully to see some of you there. And that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.